Hi, I'm Alan, and this is Prayers to the Dice Gods, and today we're taking our Space Wolves to level 3. Now, these Space Wolves are looking very different from each other, but the key to remember is that they are actually both exactly the same paint level when it comes to tabletop standards. So they've both got highlights, They've both got their shading. They've both been based. Now on this model first up, we're gonna do our edge highlighting, but we're actually gonna stick with the same shade that we base coated it. Because the brown has changed the tone so much, we get away with using this as a highlight. So we're just going in with our rust gray as our first lot of edge highlighting. We're going around every edge we can find with this color. We're trying to give it some definition because although we've got nice shading, those edges have been dulled quite a bit by the brown wash. Our next lot of edge highlighting, just aiming at our upward facing angles and those that we think would likely reflect light or we'll just give a, an extra bit of definition to the model. So we're hitting this with our Fenrisian grey. Next up we're getting the Mornfang Brown out to do our edge highlighting around the pouches on the belt and of course like normal putting in those lines just to make it look like it's had a little bit more wear and tear. Now the next little highlights as usual is our XV88 just to do another set of edge highlights and to give a little bit more definition to those lines on the pouches that we've already done. Next up we're going across the top edges with our favourite silver, the lead belcher. We're going to put this all along any upward facing angles or any angles we think would catch a little bit of light or will just add a bit more interest to the model. Now we're getting the Runefang steel out, we are going to put this across slightly smaller top parts of those silver bits to give it that nice pop like it's actually catching quite a bit of light along there. Now we're going to highlight the gold, we're going to mix a little bit of Retributor armour with some Runefang steel just to line up a bit. Next we're going to mix a, just a bit more Runefang steel just to give this a second set of highlights, you know, just to make it look like it's got some shine to it. Next up we're going to give our purity seal just a little bit of extra colour. So we're going to go around that with Mephiston red and then a Wild Rider red as an extra little bit of a highlight. As we move on to the black part of the gun casing, we're going to go in with our Mechanica Standard Grey just to do those first lot of edges all the way around every single panel on there. Next up we crack out this Celestra Grey just to pick out those top edges. Next up we're getting out the off-white colour of your choice, it really doesn't matter, just to go over the parchment on the purity seal. Lastly, we're just putting some white dots on the eyes just to make it look like they've got some sort of light reflecting off of them. Now our next model is going to be done to level 3 as well. It's going to look different, but when it comes to actually playing Warhammer 40,000 or Warhammer Age of Sigmar or any other tabletop game, the fact that your model's fully painted is the bit we're looking for. 
Now using my overhead lights, I'm going to use this to help me map out where I want my first lot of highlights to go, which all I've done is a 50-50 mix of rust grey and Fenrisian grey, just to start mapping these light reflections out along the armour panels. I don't know if you've noticed that I'm using uh, kind of little lines as I go down the model. This is just to help it look like it's blended a little bit better, just so it's not quite so, there's one colour, there's another. We're going around again just with Fenrisian Grey on its own this time where we're looking to go over those same patches that we've just done to make it look like light reflections only we're doing them a little bit smaller as we go around the model. With a mix of Fenrisian Grey and Celestra Grey, 50-50, we're going to go around the model again, we're going to do slightly smaller patches yet again and begin doing some edge highlights as we go. Now with just straight Celestra Grey, we're going to do our last lot of edge highlights. We're going to put in little spots on each of those points that we want to be looking like they're reflecting light. Now we're using little T's with the Celestra Grey just to try and con the eye into thinking that there's actually a line there when there isn't, especially on these large flat panels. On anything with a round reflection point we are putting in a nice small dot of the Celestra Grey just to make it look like that's got an actual reflection point there. Now with some pure white we're going around the edge points, uh, corners, we're putting in little dots as well as any point we think should have an extra bit of reflection. This just ups the contrast to make it look more like there's a shine to it. Onto the pouches on the belt, we're doing these a little bit different. We are starting with Morn Fang Brown like we normally would, but instead of just going along the edges, what we're actually going to do is we're going to draw little lines all the way around each of these pouches to kind of make it look like it's actually got some worn leather there. Then we get our XV88 out and we're doing exactly the same thing. We're going to go around, we're going to be putting little lines in to try and make it look like it's blending and fading. And we're not finishing with the XV88 this time, we're going to get out the Talan Sands and we're going to go around and we're going to finish up that leather highlighting the same way, doing little lines. 
So next up we're doing our grey highlighting on our bolter casing. Anyway, again, we're going to do this slightly different than we normally would. So what we're actually looking to do is make it look like the light's reflecting on the panel. So it's actually going to light up the bottom part. The first lot of highlights are our Mechanica Standard Grey mixed with some Abaddon Black 50-50 just to give us that nice transition so it doesn't just jump from dark to light. Our Mechanica Standard Grey. Mixing the Mechanica Standard Grey with our Celestra Grey, we're going to go around and do another set of highlights on there, focusing primarily on the bottom of each of the panels. Next up, we're going to finish this off with our Celestra Grey. We're going to go around all of the panels and try and make it look like we've got the lights focused where we want it. So with the lead belcher, what we're looking to do is cause a light reflection to run along the top of the gun. But if I do it just right, this should look like it's running along the arm and then along the top of the silver parts of the weapon. Mixing the Runefang steel with the lead belcher gives us a slightly less stark change from the lead belcher to the Runefang steel. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go around, try and do slightly smaller areas with that along the top of the weapon. Our gold highlight for this hasn't actually changed. What we're doing is we're going to mix in the Runefang steel into our Retributor armor. For our first lot of highlights, we're then going to progressively uh, make that lighter using the same method. So we're just going to keep adding a bit more runefang steel in, going around again, till eventually we go in and pick out some point with just our runefang steel. Now, unlike the usual models, what we're going to do is we're actually going to highlight a little bit of some of the undersuits so that it looks like the line goes all the way down across all of the colours. So we're going to go around the purity seal just with some Mephiston red for the first highlight where then we're going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet and then finally finish it off with some spots of Wild Rider red. Now the parchment on the purity seal is getting its own little highlight of skeleton bone first and then finished off with some mummy robes. Our first lot of yellow highlights is a 50-50 mix of Avalon Sunset and Flash Gits Yellow, just to give it that little light point on the top, exactly the same as the grey part of the shoulder pad on the other side. So using Flash Gits Yellow, we're going to do the second lot of highlights on top of that yellow. While we're waiting for the yellow to dry, we're going to crack out our contrast paint, Warp Lightning, just to darken up those eye lenses. We finish with a single spot of Dawn Yellow on top of that. With some pure white, we're going to put a couple of little dots on the eye lenses just to make it look like they've got some nice light reflection there. We're also going to finish up that yellow shoulder pad by putting a single yellow spot at the top there. This next part has possibly one of my best buys. I bought some Liquitex Black Ink and I find that it's really useful, especially when doing parchment. I can make it look like little squiggles really easy because of the way it flows, something you struggle with with black paint. 
To finish our models, we're going to put on some textured paint onto both models, exactly the same one. It's just a nice, easy brown texture. As we all know, that no base is complete unless the edge has been painted. This time around, we're actually going to go for black, but when it comes to painting armies, I'd personally prefer to go with the colour of the base. That way, if you're lucky enough to play on a board that is the same colour, it will blend in, so it'll look like your models are just stood there. On model number two, we're going to add in some patches of snow just to give him a little bit more interest on his base to go along with the interest we've made on the model. Both models are finished. What's the difference between the two? About 45 minutes. It took me about 45 minutes to do model one from start to finish, and it took about an hour and a half to do model two. They come out looking very different. What is the main point we take away from this though? Both are fully painted models. They are both done to an acceptable level to play tabletop standard. If you hate painting, model number one is the way to go. It's fairly quick, it's fairly easy, but it's a fully painted army once it's done. And if you've only got 20 models, it's not a great deal of time. At 45 minutes a model, which you will get quicker at doing as you go along. And if you batch paint them, you might find it's even faster just because if you do a 10 men unit, the first one's shade should dry by the time you've finished at number 10. Number two, it takes a little bit more time, it looks a little bit better, it looks like you've made a little bit more effort, but it's not about making effort. If you don't like painting, but you want to play, just get it done to a basic standard. If you want to play and you want your army to look a little bit nicer, then do it to a better standard. It doesn't matter as long as it's painted, and that's the point. Both of these models look very different, but they look a lot better than a grey model. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you get all of the notifications as and when the new videos are released. The Dice Gods favour the painted army.